how's everyone doing today? So, last episode we went over how to initiate a projectile every time we fire our primary weapon, as well as how to get it to stop uh, as soon as it hits the foot position of our player. So, today we'll be going over how to add wall and floor and player detection to this projectile, as well as we'll be cleaning up the code a bit and adding some effects to the projectile. And so the first thing I want to actually do is change this stop condition right here. So what this currently does is it actually stops the projectile once it reaches the foot position of the player. We want it to actually stop as soon as it makes contact with either a wall, a floor, or a player. And so we're actually going to be using an adaptation of a Shrewsbury's um, hit scan code. And so what we'll do is we'll say if the distance between player variable P, so our projectile's position, and the in position, uh, we will actually do a ray cast. Uh, and the ray cast start position will actually be the projectile's position. And then this end position will be actually the same exact math we're currently using to find the next position of our player variable. So again, just copying over the code, we will add the current position of our projectile plus the multiplication of um, our velocity times our delta time. However, in this case, for the hit scan, we actually need to multiply this position times a thousand. And so, um, what this raycast will do is it will either grab the location of uh, where the object will hit or where it is a thousand meters away, essentially. And so, we will actually add another multiply function here. And we will say player variable v for vector times our player variable delta time. And then we'll actually multiply that whole um, equation by a thousand uh, players to include. We do not want to include our team because this is a projectile that will damage. Um, and so we'll say the opposite team of the event player. Uh, we will include barriers and um, player owned objects. And then now, so this math right here, we want this to say to stop running this action list as soon as the distance between our player's projectile and the ray cast is basically less than the radius of the projectile. And so what we'll do is actually just set this to a number of 0 0.25, which is actually the current radius of our projectile. So we'll go back to here, we'll restart the match, and now we should be able to see that whenever launching the projectile, it will stop on walls, floors, and ceilings. And so if we play around with this code a little bit more, we'll actually notice that the 0.25 number down here is a little too tiny for higher speed projectiles. And so what we'll actually do is add some math down here for those higher speed projectiles. Um, and so we'll actually add the radius of the projectile. So 0.25 to the division of our speed of the projectile, so player variable s. And we'll just divide this by 100. And so what this equation will do is actually give us a number tiny enough for those high speed projectiles. And so if we go back into our game and restart, uh, it doesn't edit the hitbox for the slower moving projectile at all. And so that still functions the same. But if we go back in here and set this initial speed up to something like 50, and then go back in here and restart the game, we'll notice that with those higher speeds, the projectile will stop at a similar position to the lower speed ones. And so we'll just launch it to the opposite wall and it'll stop on the majority showing side of the projectile. So now that we've actually got the hit detection down, we can start going into adding effects to the projectile. For me personally, I would like the projectile to explode as soon as it hits a wall into an AOE. And so what I'll do first is actually come down to our projectile movement and we'll add a new action and we will say um, we want to destroy the actual projectile whenever we hit a wall or some sort of uh, limitating object. And so what we'll do is we'll actually destroy the effect L that we set when we first initiate the projectile. And so what this will actually do now, go back and we'll restart. Um, is every time it hits a wall or floor, the projectile will actually go ahead and delete itself. Adding an effect to that is a lot simpler than a lot of people will actually think. And so all we have to do is just go back to our projectile movement again, 
add another action. We'll say play effect. We will say um, visible to everybody. Yes, good explosion. We'll make this one purple and we'll leave it at a radius of one. And this position actually, we want to set this to our player variable P. So now if we go back in and restart, whenever that projectile gets deleted, essentially, it will go ahead and play an explosion. And the reason why we wanted to add that math to our hit detection earlier is so that way at higher speeds and at a distance, we could still see that explosion perfectly fine. So next, I actually want to go ahead and add a trail to my projectile because just a sphere flying through the air is kind of boring. And so again, we'll go back to the projectile movement. And instead of adding an effect on the outside of the loop, we will actually add one on the inside of it. So we'll say play effect, uh, visible to everybody, same. Um, and instead of a good explosion, let's say we'll do a bad explosion and we'll make it purple again. Uh, this radius will actually knock down significantly to 0.1. Um, and at the position, again, we want that to be our player variable P. So the position of our projectile. And so now, every single time that this uh, loop goes through, it will go ahead and update the position of the projectile. And after it updates it, it'll go ahead and play a tiny effect where it's at. And then whenever it does hit a uh, object, it'll go ahead and destroy the effect and then play a good explosion with a bigger radius. And so we'll go back through and restart. And so now every time we left click, we should see a trail behind our projectile. And so now that we've actually updated this hit detection, we can go back into our projectile initiation and get rid of these initial movements that we had on the projectile. And so we can get rid of these. And then something else I would like to add in here is a way for us to have multiple effects. And so if you want to do an effect kind of like the one we had at the beginning of the first episode, uh, then we want to convert this player variable L from just a standard variable to an array. And so this is actually relatively simple to do. And so instead of setting the player variable, we'll actually set this player variable at an index. And so again, play variable L, and we'll leave this index zero. And so what this will do is actually consume the first uh, slot in the array. And the value, again, we'll say last created entity. And before we create a second effect, I actually want to come up here to this destroy action and go ahead and update that. And so instead of destroying the player variable L, we will destroy the value in an array, play variable L and we will leave the index to zero. And so now we'll go back through, test it, make sure everything still works as intended. And from, the, from there, we will start adding effects on top of that. And so we'll check it out. Everything is still working as intended. If we open up the inspector though, we should notice a zero next to the L, meaning that it is making an array on itself. And so we'll go back to the inspector, or the editor, sorry and we will actually add a new effect. And so we'll create another effect, um, visible to everybody, type sphere. Uh, we'll actually make this a bad aura. So we'll start making that projectile that we had at the beginning of the first episode. Uh, the color will make it red and we will make the radius 0.25 as well as the position we will leave at player variable P, yeah. And then I wanna move this just below where we set the last uh, array value. And we will actually just copy this um, set L action, move it up behind that effect that we just set. And we'll change this index from zero to one. Again, we'll go back up to this destroy effect, copy that, paste it, move it up to the top of this action list and move this down to the last destroy uh, action and set this index to one as well. Something else we have to ch change is um, this skip action. We want it to skip two lines now, now that we're destroying two separate effects. Um, as well as down in the projectile movement, we need to update this destroy effect um, action right here. And so we'll just copy these two. Paste them down here. 
and we will move this play effect down behind these. And so now we'll go ahead and restart. We should have a bad aura that is red attached to our sphere whenever we launch the projectile. And so I do see a little bit of red, however, it's moving a too, bit too fast for me. So we're gonna move this uh, initial speed down back to 10. And then just for this testing purposes, while we're playing with the effects, I'm actually gonna change the gravity from 9.8 to one, just so we can see all of the effects on the projectile as it moves. And so there is a red aura going on it. And so let's actually start playing around with some more of these effects to replicate the projectile we had at the beginning. Um, and so instead of this sphere, we will go back to, again, another bad aura. Instead, though, we'll make this white, and we'll make this radius actually 0 0.1. And so we'll go back to the projectile movement, and the trail behind it, we'll leave it a... Sorry, that's the uh, final explosion. We do need to switch this to red. Um, but then this trail right here, we want to switch this from purple to red as well. And now we'll go back through and restart. And we should have the same exact projectile as we did in that demo video I released a few days ago. And so we'll launch it, and it goes through the air. And uh, obviously it's not going to arc as of right now because we don't have any gravity on it. But let's go set those values back to normal. So gravity will set back to 9.8. And the velocity, we will uh, we'll actually leave that at 10 for now. And so I actually just want to see the arc of the projectile with how it looks with that effect on it. And so, as you can see, a projectile code really isn't too, too difficult. The hardest part about it is going to be implementing it in with characters um, because it does consume about 13 to 14 different variables. Um, and so next episode, we'll start going over how to add damage to this projectile, as well as we'll start going over how to possibly start having multiple projectiles out at the same time, um, having one that's bound to primary fire, one bound to an ability, and so forth. If you guys do have any suggestions for this projectile, something you want to see, please leave it down in the comments below. But until next time, take care.